Shall we bow down our heads in prayer as I begin to minister to you the word of God for today? Our Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you for this glorious moment and time to be here to listen to your word once again. We thank you for all the prophecies and words that you've given to us in the past few days. We thank you for what you are coming to give to us today. We thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you do, and all that you continue to do for us. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless us. Give us the opportunity to show ourselves approved unto God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated wherever you are if you are standing. If you are sitting down, so God bless you as well, wherever you are. A few days ago, I shared with you on important topics. And I shared with you first, on the first day, on the topic of beyond limitation. I made you understand that as a Christian, or as an attendee, or a member of the La Verena Church, you need to come to an understanding. That whatever challenge that comes your way, you are beyond limitation. Therefore, you can handle any challenge that comes your way. Being beyond limitation be, means that you are, are beyond the challenges of life. There is no challenge that you cannot face unless you allow that challenge to enter and fixate itself into your life. Hallelujah. But one thing I want to always encourage you is that Continue to exercise the power of being beyond limitation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be beyond limitation. Amen. What did I say? I said, be a person beyond limitation. Have this mindset that no challenge whatsoever can harm you, hurt you, or do anything to you in any way whatsoever. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have this mindset. Have this mind. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living Lord. So as we are here today, you should know that you are beyond limitation. I'm recapping so that you know the essence of why we are meeting here. Because these words, I'm not just preaching them to you. These are priceless messages. I'm not just preaching them to you and I just don't come and stand here and talk for one hour just because I like to talk. If I wanted to do that, I would have found a friend, I would have found a therapist, I would have found any other person to talk to. I wouldn't have come here to express my view. I wouldn't have come here to express the knowledge of God that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit to give unto you. I wouldn't have done that. Hallelujah. These are views of human beings we, when we preach to you, it is a view of what we see the Bible as. Apart from it being a view, it is the knowledge of God that is coming to you through a different person. That is why the Bible clearly states that if you want to really acknowledge or find a prophet, you must find one that believes in the death and the resurrection of the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you have to notice all these things. You are beyond limitation. Beyond every power, every principality, every authority, every ruler of darkness. The only reason why things are able to rule over people is because you allow it to rule over you. Remember that I told you and I keep telling you and I will always continue to tell you that one of the reasons why Christians are always found fixated in challenges is due to the fact that they don't have the knowledge of the power that God has given unto them to work and to do what's right. They don't have the knowledge of the power that God has given to them to do what is right. You'd always find a Christian fixated in a problem and you'd ask yourself, so aren't these the people of prosperity?
and you ask yourself questions that if they are the people of prosperity, why are they now suffering? Why the affliction? Why the suffering now? Because this is not what the Savior Lord Jesus Christ promised them. So why now are they now suffering after all this? When you come into the realm of Christianity, you understand that there are seasons and times. And that is our topic today. Seasons and times. Hallelujah. I'm still recapping. So we are beyond limitation. Yesterday I told you that you are far. Was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday I told you that you are far above all powers. And I used yesterday uh, uh, Monday's message to minister to you on that. So today we are moving on to a different type of message, which is seasons and times. This is session three. Hallelujah. Seasons and times. That's the title of today's message. That's the title of today's message. Seasons and times. First of all, what is a season? What is a time? Today, when I woke up, I was surprised to find out that finally, you know, in the country of Ghana, when we talk about Christmas, one of the most significant things apart from the Christmas carols, the trees, the outings, and every other tourism um, wonders that you want to do, or that you want to indulge in. Apart from all those things, one of the most significant things that you notice is Hamata. It is a mixture of a cold weather and dry, cold and dry weather. So it is cold at the same time, and the weather loses its moisture. So there is less heat, although the sun is shining, there is less heat, and it's very cold. So during that moment, you'd find everybody having pomade, Vaseline, this and that, doing all over their lips. That's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that is what signifies the season. So a season is a period of time where a certain event occurs. Did you understand that? A season is a certain period in time where an event occurs. Hallelujah. A season is a point in time where an event occurs. So that is a season. So we have the rainy season. It's a time where it rains. And what occurs is the rain. What's, what resulting in abundant vegetation, crop production, and etc. Hallelujah. And we also have the dry season where we are now. It's quite dry over here. It's not as moist as before. You, you see, today I've been licking my lips everywhere. I, I can't even count how many times. Today I applied for me, it's like I, I've not even applied it on my body. I just walk out like that. So I was asking some of my friends that ah, because even me, I was carrying jackets. I was carrying jackets. I don't go out without jacket nowadays. I always go with jackets. So I was carrying jacket. I was wearing it, I was still freezing. And so I'll tell someone, you'll be like, hey, you're cold. I say, yes, I'm freezing. I'm freezing at the degree of Antarctica right now. That's the time. And it's still doing. I, listen, I saw somebody today. I said, eh, is that your face? Your face looks as, you look as dry as the Sahara Desert. Hallelujah. That's just by the way, though. But I'm just saying that it is a season in time where you need everybody present or everybody with vision or you know with intellect intelligence would notice that season and that time so everybody in Accra today has noticed that we are currently in the Hamatan season which is also in December which is Christmas so that's what we use to signify the season apart from it being Christmas 
the season for the dry season is December. So it happens from December into the month of February to March. Hallelujah. Now this year, specifically, the um, weather has not been balanced. So you can't really set it at the, you know, the places that you want to set it to, that you want to determine as so, so, and so. But a season is a point in time. A season is a point in time in which a certain instance or a situation, something of a great happening occurs. Hallelujah. What is time? Time is unexplainable. Time is what directs the human nature, animal, the human animal, psychological, physical, mental, and spiritual nature to do things in order. Now, you realize that when we go into the Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, we realize that there was a time for everything. The time for everything. The time where there was light in the world. There was time for the waters to be created. The firmaments, the human beings, the seas, and every other living creature on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. So all these were times. And it was a time... Meaning that as it was a time, it was a season. Because it was a season of creation. After that creation ended, the season has ended. So now he has finished everything. So now they are being led according to time. So then, what is the basis of what I'm going to talk to you about today? One thing I want to understand is that as a Christian, if you are here at this conference, you have to know the seasons and time in which you need to act as a Christian. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to know the seasons and time in which you need to act to do what is right. First Timothy. First Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 1. First Timothy, chapter 2, and the verse 1. He says, I exhort therefore that prayers, that first of all, first of all, prayers, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, all godliness and honesty. Let's go on. He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. From these scriptures that we have read at this point and moment in time, what is the basic intellect, understanding, or knowledge that you can get from it? Let's, when you go back to verse 1, what does it tell you about there? It says, I exhort therefore that first of all. So meaning this is a paramount sign. It's a paramount season that you need to do something. It says, okay, maybe you don't understand the exhort. So let's go to a different translation. Let's look for NLT. He says, I <clears throat> urge you, I urge you, I enforce you, I'm telling you, I'm empowering you, that first of all, to pray for people. Meaning that in this season and time, in the New Testament, we are to pray for people, always in prayer. Always in prayer. We have to pray for people. Because this is the life that we live. This is who God has called us to be. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the life that we live and this is who God has called us to be. He says, I urge you that first of all, pray for people. First of all. When you hear the word first, it means that a preamble to something. Hallelujah. It means a preamble to something. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the living God. I was telling you something right before the internet went off. I was saying with great importance that that scripture, let's go back to it. First Timothy chapter 2 and the verse number 1. It says what over here? It says, I urge you first of all to pray for people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. So it is a season of what? Prayer. It is a time of what? Prayer. Because he uses the word there, first. So first of all over there means that it has to come before everything else. Meaning, when, so when we talk about timing, first, second, third. So we have the first hour, the second hour, and then the third hour. So he's, the word of God is now saying that I urge you, I'm empowering you, that before you do anything, first of all, in the season and time that we are in, in the season and time that you go in, first of all, pray for people. That is what the word of God is enlightening you to do. First of all, pray for people. Pray for people. Pray for people. I want you to know the importance of the season and time that we are in. We are in the closing phase of 2023, the year of extravagant change. There are a lot of obstacles that will come our way to test us. But you must know the seasons and times to be able to conquer them according to the power that God has given you in this time and season. Praise be unto the Lord. You must know the importance, the season and the time that the Lord has given you to act, to do what needs to be done. Amen. We are in the closing phase of the year. So this is a season of closing. It means that this is a season of rounding up the entire year as one. So in what does what now wait? Another thing is that first of all, apart from something occurring in that season, yes, that's that's basically what I wanted to even say. That apart from we knowing the time or the season of something. Something has to occur in that season. That actually makes it a season. So the occurrence of something is the season of something. For example, as I'm talking now, I was um, just online and they are having the honor service for the late Bishop Oko Botei Doku, which is a lighthouse pastor. He died not a few weeks ago and it's quite devastating to see him go. But anyways, that's aside. But it, it for the family right now in this season, it is a season of mourning. So they are, they are now mourning the their beloved one who has passed on to the Lord. So you need to know the season in time that we season and time that we are in. To know how to act, how to fight the snares of the devil, to fight the devil off and to get what you really need to get. Because if you do not really know your essence of who you are in the ministry and in the word of God as God has called you to do, he will continue to dominate you and continue to teach you and direct your life as to what you are meant to do. And you are the ones who are meant to dominate and to direct the life of the people. Hallelujah. You are the ones meant to dominate and direct the life of people. To lead the life of people from being astray onto the right path. Glory to God. Just to lead the life of the people. 
You have to teach them what to do in the right time, in the right season. That is why you have been selected amongst all of them, sanctified. They don't just call you gifts for nothing. According to Ephesians chapter 4. They don't just say gifts for nothing. Hallelujah. God did not just give gifts unto men for us to just come and be the same again. No. He gave gifts unto men so that we can make differences in our lives, our families, our businesses, our jobs, and everything that pertains unto us in this world today. Hallelujah. One thing I want to let you understand is that we are we, you need to understand the ceiling time. And I'll talk to you specifically about this here in a brief moment, and then we'll move on to what's going to happen next year. This was the December 31st, all night service. But I told you that at this conference, there is a lot of inspiration that comes from the realm of the Spirit. So if there's any other conference that you are going to miss, don't miss this one. ISMLC 2023, a yearly conference being prayed for with ministers and you want to miss it. The meaning that you are missing the timing, the season of God to enlighten you about the truth. You may be going to church, but it's not these same things that will be told to you. That is why you must get the view of everybody and live according to the right one. Hallelujah. So I'm going to explain to you the seasons that we've experienced in this year of 2023. We've lost a lot of people in this year. This year has not been a good one. Many have been depressed, deprived. Many have died. Many souls have been lost to the devil. Many are still making fun of God. Many are still worshipping the devil. Many are still initiating death. Many are still killing, stealing, destroying the works of God everywhere. Many are still doing it today. It has normalized itself in our community today. You know, in the times and seasons where people die, you, all, you uh, obviously have the conscience that it is a time of mourning. So you now mourn the person. You start to recollect on what they've done in their life, what they are doing, how it has impacted people, how it's teaching people, all around the world because all these things count at the end of the day when you die that's when your life be assessed by those who hate you those who love you those who dishonor you those who hate you the everybody and you will have no say so death is a season that we've experienced so many times this year and it has become so common to the extent that i cannot even fathom it to some point that so many have died this year so many have left us this year unexpectedly just suddenly they are gone and it may seem normal but brothers and sisters beware of what i'm telling you this is not normal you can never call this normal anymore You can't call this normal anyway. Because I will not accept this as normal. It can't be normal. And you'd ask, what then could we have done to stop the system? Because you, there are certain seasons that you cannot stop. They are beyond stopping 
There's nothing that you can do to stop them. If somebody wants to die, you can't stop them from dying. If somebody wants to kill themselves, you can't stop them from doing that. You can only if you are present. But if you are not, you don't have any power. By the time you may come, the person is gone. The person has committed suicide and is gone. Hallelujah. So what could we have done to stop this disease? I can tell you one thing for sure. And it's that we could have spoken prosperity. We could have spoken health. We could have spoken goodness. And all these things would have manifested. All the people we've lost in the seasons and times of this year. You can't tell me that this year you've not lost someone dear to you. Some have gone. It's just that it's either you did not notice or they are not of any value to you. I've not lost anyone on my family's side. But the season that they died in last year, last two years, years ago, still remains and is reminded. Or it's, it's, it serves as a reminder. It comes to remind a season is something that is recurrent. Do you understand what I'm saying? A season is something that is recurrent. So if you lost a loved one this year, next year, because the person died this year, it is an event that occurred in a time frame. It's an event that occurred in a time frame. So now, this being so, what else is next? It occurred in a time frame. So, after a year or two, or after some time passes by, when that season or timing comes again, you will be reminded of what happened. For example, the same way we are all reminded about the time where people died at circle, thread, gas, push, rainy day, Gruesome. People blew up like bomb. What could we have done to stop such? We could have spoken. But we didn't have the confidence. At times, a certain season and time comes in our life. We know we can deal with it. But there is a limitation. We know we can deal with it. There comes a season and a time. You know you can speak for something to happen. But you cannot open your mouth. There is a limit. There is something stopping you. It's like it's a boundary. That's why I first made you understand that you are beyond limitation. And today we are talking about seasons and times. You are beyond limitation. So when it comes to these things, never think for a moment that you don't have a say. You always do. You always have a say. The word of God has given you a say. Matthew. Chapter 28. You have been given a say. And the verse number 19. Uh, in James. And it says. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. You have been given a say. In order for you to fulfill this season and time, or to teach, you need 
to therefore have a say. So meaning that you've been given a say by the Almighty God to go and preach. I showed you a scripture during the Heart Follower Conference. And I'll show it to you right now. Matthew chapter 10 and the verse number 8. It says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. That means that this freely you have received, that is in the scripture. It tells us that there was a season where we, they received. So there is a season where we receive. And now we give back. And it is the same thing with death. God gives us the time to do all that we need to do on the face of the earth. And then when our time is up, He will take the time away. And that is when your judgment will come. So, what then? Is the right thing to do. What then will serve as a transformation to your life? First of all, number one, be conscious of the season that you are in. Be conscious of the season that you are in. There was a time a relative of mine died last year. Is either last year or this year i can't remember quite when because we've lost we like i'm saying that we've lost a lot of people young old you name it so i lost a relative last year and i just could not believe my ears when i was being told but the person was now dead. I said, what? She was gone. And something continued to me. You can do something about this. Something continued telling me that you can do something about this. And I'm now looking back at that, speaking on this topic. And I'm reminding myself that maybe that was the season and time for me to orchestrate healing, raising the dead. Because some of us are meant to live very, very long. But it is the devil's work, or it is the devil's handiwork to make sure that we don't live long, we don't prosper. And we will always die early so that judgment will be follow us. So that things that we could have right, people that we've wronged, that we could have restarted with again, we cannot do that. We cannot have a second chance. Because when you wrong somebody, you can always go to make everything right. But this is the opportunity that the devil does not want to give to you to do whatever he wants to do like that. He will not give you that opportunity because he knows that once he gave you that opportunity, everything is going to be spotless. That is why at times I'm saying that there is a season and a time. When a person is dying in their own good time, it is the person who will release his spirit and then leave himself. It's not you that will tell the person. And when you raise the person up, The person will not come back because they have accepted the fact that they are now being translated into another dimension or another realm. They are now being translated into another dimension or another realm. So, that is it. This is the reality of our lives. It's just a vapor.
it's just a vapor but anyways i was just depicting this to you just to show you something very very important and it is that know the season and time to do what you need to do the bible says that there is a time for everything god has been speaking to most of you but you've turned a blind ear to what god has been talking to you about you don't want to listen because you feel like your time has not come this and that and many other things of that sort don't do that or else by the time you finish or by the time you realize you have delayed all the time that the lord wants to give to you to do something amiss maybe that was your time to shine but you do not take it seriously therefore it has been given on to another Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living Lord. And I'm being very serious with what I'm saying. Know your season and time to do what is right. Know your season and time. Because some of us God speaks to us. God has told you, do this thing at this time. But you will still be holding back. What are you holding back from? What are you resisting? What are you resisting? Why are you holding back? God has sent you to do something. And then you'll be holding back. Why are you holding back? Allow the Lord to work in your life. He has told you, go here, do this, do that. Make me happy. Prove to others that I'm the one who has sent you. But that's not what you do. You go away what? I knew in myself that there was something that I could do. But because, and there was a, a reason why I did not do what I, I, I was meant to do. Number one, you see, when you believe the word of God so much, you are able to understand the timing of everything in the word of God. You put the word of God to practice every time. People tend to see you as overdoing the word of God. But our lives, let me tell you, is an overdoing of God's grace. It's an overdoing of God's grace. That's what I want to tell you. So if you don't know, live a good life. Your life is a life of God overdoing things, changing your rank. Hallelujah. That's why nothing is impossible for us. But you see, not all understand this concept. We all go to church, but we all have faith to a certain limit. The same Bible you, 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 we just read the scripture. Let's go back there. Matthew 10, verse 8. We just read the scripture. What does it say? It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Raise the dead. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. You saw that. We just read these things as mere words. And then we just leave them there. We just read these things as mere words. And then we just leave them there. We think that they are just in the Bible for fun. This is not something we are talking about from years ago. It may have been written years ago. But let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That is why no matter what technical difficulty we have, we are still able to subdue, travel, and prevail over that situation. 
because it's not a devil that has given us the opportunity to be here. It is God Almighty. So therefore, it is Him who we are working for. So therefore, I'm not afraid of persecutions. Number one, like, like I said, know the season and time that you are in. Because that is what will help you to act accordingly. That is what will help you to act accordingly. Are you hearing me? I said, know the season and time that you are in. Some will say, Pastor, how do I know the season and time that I'm in? How do I identify this? There are so many ways to identify the season and time that you are in. First of all, be watchful of what occurs around you. That's number one. Be watchful of what occurs around you. Number two, be watchful of certain instances that occur more than once. If you want to notice a season, let's use December for example. This month, a lot of people go. Just that we don't realize it because of the celebration of the, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. A lot of people die in this one. A lot of people die in this one. And we don't realize it because it's a month of celebration. To celebrate the death, sorry, the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. So most of us don't realize it. But it happens a lot. A lot. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. I'm just so intrigued to sing this song. I want to save it to a prayer service. Okay, I'll just sing it, but I will not add the instrumental. The song says, that you will remember your creator before that season comes before that time comes where your teeth start to fall out before your shoulders bend over before you lose the ability to see well all these things they are in the song and the song goes like this Remember your creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days are not yet come. Remember your creator. The days of your I don't think I remember that one. But what uh, the, the second stanza because it's two, it's in two pairs. But the next one says, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the sun, the moon and stars grow dark. Before the grass becomes a burden and desires fail. It goes on and on. Listen, we'll sing it on Sunday. And you see the value. This one is not just any praise. We've oh. not done ISMLC praise service before. Okay, we did one last year. But it wasn't like this one that I'm talking about. The season and time that we are in requires true worshippers of God. 
people who are ready to notice what God is doing in their lives today, right now, at this moment, at this season, at this hour, in time. That is the type of people that we need. True worshippers who are worshipping in spirit and in truth. Not in flesh. Hallelujah. You have to know the season and time. So that is why we always are people who change a lot. We are ever transforming. It's a word to you. We are ever transforming people because we change according to seasons and times. Now, listen, I've not spoken much on this topic and the time is running out. But let me say this, that there are certain seasons and times that will remind you about certain instances or situations that honestly you should not be reminded about. Because once it reminds you about that certain situation or season in time, oh, come on. It will just draw you back and delay what God has destined for you in that time. Because, listen, a season and time can occur or re-occur. Hmm? A season or time can occur or re-occur. And you know what happens? It is either that season and time makes you or breaks you. It either teaches you or you make something out of what it is doing or what that season is destined for. There are certain seasons and times whereby when you think about you, you are not even meant to fathom it, you are not meant to even think about it. It's not like you, you don't care, but those seasons and times will drag you back. Some are also brought forth to you, some seasons and times are also brought forth to you that are difficult and eventually will bring you back. But in the process, you have to learn what God has for you in that season and time. What God wants to learn from that to also save somebody's life from falling in the same pot of soup. Hallelujah. So you have to notice the importance of these things. Never let them pass you by for any reason whatsoever. Always know the system and time that you are in before you act according to these words that I've given to you. That you are far above all powers, that you are beyond limitations. Before you exercise this, know this one thing, that you must know the season and time. You are beyond limitations. You are far above all powers. But now, you need to know the season and time to be far above all powers. And it is all the time. But you need to know the time when you need to really exercise the power to work. When your presence is there or when it arrives in an atmosphere. Hallelujah. So, have this at the back of your mind every day that you must know the sin and time that we are in. In this month of December, what are we meant to do? Thank the Lord. Celebrate His birth. Some don't believe that He was born on 25th. And it does not really matter about the dates. The fact is that this was the month we have selected. You can select any month. In all the 12 months of the year, you can select any month and celebrate Jesus over there. That he was born in that month. That is you. It's a personal opinion. Do you understand? But this is what we believe. This is what we believe. So, the system and time that has been set apart, that everybody is conscious of, is that Jesus Christ is born in this month. And therefore, what does it result in? Celebration, festivities, such as Christmas lights, decoration, and every other thing of that sort. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Christmas light, decoration, outings, tourism, and many other things of that sort. So, that is what the result is. But in the realm of the spirit, there is a lot that happens in this month that we rarely notice, and it is the loss of people. In this month, especially when it comes to this month, and we are also having an election in this country, usually we vote on 7th December, 
we lose a lot of people. And some will ask themselves, why do we lose a lot of people? Because of the season and time. Because Satan is also conscious of this principle that is not being spoken about much. Seasons and times, the, the devil is very con- is conscious of being like something. Always conscious of the season and time that he's in. Because that's the moment where you act. Satan, Satan also uses the seasons and times to act, to do what he wants to do. So you must also know the season and time to be able to neutralize his plan in that season and time. And like I'm saying, you have to notice occurrences. What is going on or what happens when it comes to that moment in time? Because times will come and you will be like, I've seen this before. That's why we have dreams. That's why we have visions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the visions will give you a preamble to what you are meant to do. Hallelujah. The visions will now give you a preamble as to what you are meant to do in that season and hour of time. Hallelujah. Listen to what I'm saying. Key to it too. Nobody will tell you this thing anywhere. No one. No one is going to sit you down and tell you these things. I'm the one who will do it because I was the one selected for you. So I have the right to tell you these things. There are certain occurrences because there will be certain times that it will come. Maybe the Lord has revealed to you in a vision that this was meant to happen. That's why visions are there. It's not there just for fun. For you to just see the future and then you'll just be dead. No. It's for you to see what is coming to happen so that you know how to neutralize it when it comes forth. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, seasons and times also work with visions. Somebody say visions. Seasons and time also work with visions. Physical outlook. Seasons and times always work with visions. This is the season of Hamatan. So you have to notice that during Hamatan, what always happens? That's how you are able to neutralize this, these things. So you realize in the month of this and that, we lose a lot of people. How can we neutralize this? And you say, okay, this one, we are praying like this. We are praying in this direction. We are praying using this scripture. We are doing this. We are doing that event. We are enlightening people and we are giving them the knowledge about what they are meant to do. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? Never let these words that I'm saying pass you by because you need them for an eternity. In this season and time, one thing that must remain on the top of your hearts is the art of thanksgiving. Did you hear me? The art of thanksgiving. Or you can say the act of thanksgiving. Or a thanksgiving mood. That is one thing that should remain at the top, the uttermost top, when it comes to this season and time. In this Thanksgiving, even in Thanksgiving, or in this season, the devil also knows the season. But that is where he will also use this time to also give you reasons why you should not be thankful to the Lord. So you realize that you would experience much more greater problems in this month than any other month compared. Is because this is the amount of thanksgiving. You are meant to thank the Lord. You are meant to dedicate this month and thank the Lord for all that He has done for you throughout the year and beyond. You are meant to thank Him for that. But no, that's not how the devil operates or that's not how the devil works. He knows the season and time. So now that he knows that this is the time or this is the moment of thanksgiving, that's when you bring things your way, you remind you of certain instances, certain things in the time that you've been through, that will help you or that will encourage you or that will direct you to be unthankful to the Lord or not thankful to the Lord for what he has actually done for you, genuinely. That's always the plan of the Lord. So be careful of occurrences. That's why I said the timing of, ask yourself, I told you at the global communion service in this month that ask yourself when a thought a certain thought comes in your head 
when a certain season, when you remember a certain thought, when you remember a certain time, a, me- a certain memory, ask yourself, why is it coming at this time? Ask yourself that question, that, that very vital question, that why is the thought, why is this memory coming at this time of the hour? And if you are able to sit down and assess before it even has way to do what it wants to do, you'll be fine. If you assess and you know that, okay, it's coming because of this and this, therefore, I should not allow it. Then you are okay. But if you don't assess and you allow it to work as you want it to work, it will fixate itself in your life and it will claim its territory in your life. And this is one of the things that we want to prevent. It shouldn't be so. As a child of God. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Be conscious of the season and time. Be conscious of the season and time. Be conscious of the season and time. Know the season and time that you are in. Be conscious of the occurrences. Be conscious of the things that happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? The things that happen. Unusual things. It will it, it ah, you just look at something and it's just happening. You and you'll be like, ah, which one? Well, people, which one and two is this? Because that's how it is. You just see something and it's just happening, and then you'll be like, ah, but why is it happening now? That's sudden. So you now ask, why is it happening now? And you look at the season. You assess. Is this the season for this? Is the season for that? Okay. If so, then this can take place. And that's how we operate in the timing of God's word and His will. Hallelujah. Okay. My time is almost up. All that I'll tell you is that be mindful of the season and time that you are in. Also, before I conclude, in the next five minutes, I'll be using it to tell you what you need to do in the coming year. Be mindful of the season and time. We are entering into January. Very soon. Minutes, sorry, months, uh, uh, days away. We are entering into January 2024. Be mindful of what you do in that month as well. Be mindful of the season that you are in. Be mindful of where you are. Because where you are will also determine the season which you are in. For example, if I'm standing in Ghana right now, currently in Accra, Ghana, we are experiencing a matter. If I was standing in America right now or UK, we would be experiencing winter, cold conditions. If it was October and I was in Canada, I'd be experiencing autumn. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all these things, you need to have notice of them. Where you are will determine where, where you are will determine what season that you are in. What time that you are meant to do this and do that. So there is a time for everything, brothers and sisters. Know how to use your time effectively. Are you hearing me? Especially the SHS candidates who are listening to this message. Maybe after it's happened. That as you are going back for this long period in time, you've come back again. But you will go back for a longer period of time. My prayer for you is that you know the season and time to do what needs to be done. That you may excel in both your academics and excel in the will of God exceedingly abundantly above what we can ever ask or think. Because this is our life. We are not failures. We can never fail. We can never fail. Failure is not a portion. So, like I'm saying, in this year, be mindful of the season and time. When anything happens, when any thought or memory comes, ask yourself, why is it happening? Why is it coming at this time? Assess. Because I share with you my experience at that time. I don't I can't share with you that at this moment in time because it will just prolong the service. And we are closing in three hours. And it's all it's two hours and eight minutes right now. I'm just looking at my time over here. Praise God. And after this time is over, they mean the season is over. So when they say we are doing promos now, it is over at this time. So they set a date and it's over. 
So know the times and seasons. And knowing this will help you to operate in God's will according to time. So whenever you want to do something, you don't find difficult. All you need to know is the season and if the time is right for it. When it was time for ministry, nobody told me that it was time. See, when it's time for you to do ministry, when it's time for you to jump and do the things of the will of God, nobody, and I say again, nobody will tell you that go and do what is right. Nobody will enlighten you on that. It is you who will know that it is now my time. Nobody will tell you. you it is you that you will know that it is now my time. Because when the Spirit of the Lord came to me and informed me that it is now time. I knew that it was now my season to elevate. So it should be the same with you. You are my brethren. So as it was with me, so should it be with you. Because as Jesus was in this world, so are we. And as I am, so are you. So we are all supposed to do and grow ourselves in the upright way of God in any way, possible way that we can. Glory to God. Keep this at the back of your mind. Have it every day. Let it serve as a reminder. Amen. Let it serve as a reminder. I'll continue more on this and times tomorrow. If not, then Friday. But if not Friday, then tomorrow. Can we kindly stand to our feet as we begin to close this meeting? Wherever you are right now, open your mouth, begin to speak to the Lord. Martin, Brad, Dego, Man, Devrig, Amangesta, Ades, Amila, Dosa, La Franche. Re, Brad, Daglimo, Sungre, Leve, Sungre, Le Kashar, Brad, Nefe. Ra, Brad, Dela, Ma, Sungre, Negeve, Sungre, Leve, Sila, Ma, Sata. Ra, Sota, La Branda, Gesta, La Branda, Gele, Bos, Tuka, La Ma, Shala, Brad, Father Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given to us to be here, to serve, to be in your presence, to know your word, to receive what you have for us. Thank you for giving us three hours, three hours of being in your presence. It's not enough, O oh Lord, but we wish to be in your presence all the time. But our bodies will not allow us to do so. There is so much that we can only do to be with you, to dwell in your truth. So, Father Lord, help us that on the last day, may you give us that opportunity to dwell with you all this. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We love you, O oh Lord, and we honor you. Help us in this season and time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated.